Okay, in this video, I'm going to continue on with my tutorials on vector calculus for electromagnetism. This is video number 19, and I'm going to discuss product rule number 4. I'd like to draw your attention to my website, universityphysicstores.com. The previous video to this is number 18, where I discussed how to get the curl of a vector field made by multiplying the scalar f by the vector field a. And uh, the reason it's important, I think, for you to watch this video is the thought process. I'll be using the same thought process in this particular video and uh, you know it's, it's, it's kind of an incremental thing. That's why I've done the videos in this particular order. So in order to be as quick as possible I've already computed the curl of, uh, excuse me, the cross product of A and B and have taken the divergence. Note of course that there is a, there we'll say the curl, the cross product of A and B is a vector but the divergence of that vector field is a scalar. So all I've done is multiplied in, or operated, we'll say, del del x on the i-hat components, del del y on the j-hat components, and del del z on the, the, the k-hat components. So what we need to do now is compute the various different uh, product rules. So there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 product rules, giving us a total of 12, uh, 12 um, identities or 12 parts to this. So I'm going to write them out because I'll need this for completeness. So you're just going to have to bear with me while I do this. So we're going to have a sub y, del del x, uh, b sub z, plus b sub z, del del x, a sub y. We're going to have minus a sub z, del del x, b sub y. We're going to have minus b sub y, del del x, and we're going to have a sub z. We're going to have minus a sub x, del del y, b sub z, and minus b sub z, del del y, a sub x, plus a sub z, del del y, b sub x, plus b sub x, del del y, a sub z, plus a sub x, del del z, b sub y, plus b sub y, del del z, a sub x, minus a sub y, del del x, b sub x, and finally, because I can't fit it in, minus b sub x, del del x, a sub y. And you might look at that and go, oh my god, what is that? Like, how am I supposed to even uh, begin to look at a better way of writing this? And that's exactly how I felt the first time I did this and the second time, and probably the third and fourth time too. too. But, you need to think about this. If you're talking about vectors, if you're talking about vectors, the way you're, you're going to have, we'll say, an i, a j, and a k hat component, the way to do it is to isolate them in terms of i, j, and k. So you look at all your components, you pick one set, let's say i hat, and you work with that. And by symmetry, it'll work for both j hat and k hat also. But when you're talking about scalars, and this is an actual, is a scalar field, you're not, so you're, you're not, we'll say, the, you're not going to apply looking at all the i-hat or j-hat or k-hat components because you can't. So you need to look at something across the whole thing and come up with the symmetry. Now, with this 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 terms, how are you supposed to even begin looking at these? So, um, right, first of all, anything that has... Uh, Anything that looks, let's say, like, let's say, take the first term, a sub y, del del x, and b sub z. Now, to me, that immediately seems, in some way, to be a dot product. It seems to be, do you see, the product between a sub y, so a sub y dot something else. All right, that's what it seems to, to me. Okay, because you're after getting a scalar, and we're multiplying a component of, of a, so a sub y. So that, at some stage, it would have had to, had, had to have been a vector. So we have the dot product of a sub y and something. Now what, then we have this d dx b sub y. So that could be a lot of things. It could be the it could be grad div or curl. So how like what what do we do? So what I'm going to suggest is as follows: that if we look through this, we can find some terms are multiplied by components of a, right? So some terms are multiplied by components of a, and some terms are multiplied by components of b. So there seem to be two different dot products going on here. One with the vector a, and, oh, and one with the vector b, and something else. So let it, let's just rearrange these 
or collect all the terms where it seems to be a dot product with A and collect the rest of the terms where it seems to be a dot product with B. So we're going to have collecting the terms with A we're going to have A sub Y del del X B sub Z or, uh, minus A sub Z del del X B sub Y minus A sub X del del Y B sub Z or B, yeah, B sub Z plus A sub Z del del y b sub x minus a sub x del del z b sub y minus a sub y del del x b sub x all right and that's we'll say i'm going to call that part one and of course there's a similar part with uh, with part two so i'm not going to do part two because it's, it's it's going to be the same thing okay by symmetry and you'll see in a minute so you now you're saying to yourself, well, how do I, how do I, um, how do I, what's what's my next step? Well, it seems to be just by it, the complexity of it, it seems to be a cross product of some form. It seems to be a cross product because if you look here, we'll say that let's look at the x terms. Let's where where is there pre multiplication by x? Here's here's the pre multiplication by x. So this seems to be this. The, that's the the terms. Oh, sorry, that's not. They aren't the terms pre multiple of the x, they're one of the terms. So we have a term here and a term here. So that's going to be minus a sub x del del y b sub z and minus a sub x del del z b sub y. Now, like I said, by the complexity, it seems to be a cross product. Now, a dot product involves terms, we'll say i hat dot i hat. So a sub x corresponds with something like, we'll say, the, the x component a sub x i hat dot something else. A sub x i hat dot something else. But this then we're left with del del y b sub z and del del z b sub y. But if you think about if you think about the the, the we'll say the curl of b, the curl of b in the i hat direction is going to have no <coughs> x component. And if you look, if you actually compute it, you'll find it, it is exactly del del y b sub z minus del del z b sub y. Uh, so that if if you look at it now, this minus term here, I'll, I'll talk about that in a second. But so I'm going to leave it in there for a moment, right? You'll find that in the i hat direction, for a cross product, you will have no x component, which is exactly what we have here. So it seems that we have, in actual fact, got the curl of b. So if you go ahead and on a separate sheet of paper, and I've done it in a previous video, compute the curl of the curl of b. What you'll actually find is that what we have here is minus a dot the curl of b the curl of b that's what we have here and if you look at the all the other terms which are left out what you'll have is plus b um, the dot the curl of a for the same reasoning so you isolate we'll say the x components the y or the, the, the z components and that will look like a, a dot product with b and the rest will turn out to be the curl or the, the curl of a so putting it all together what we have miraculously I suppose is that if you take the dot product between your Nabla operator and the curl of A, and or sorry, the cross product of A and B, you're going to get B dot the curl of A minus A dot the curl of B. All right. So that's all I've got to say about that. Thanks for watching. Please pass it on to your friends. Subscribe to my channel, and you might also visit universityphysicstorials.com. Thanks.